Hello, can I help you? Hi there. Uh, this is Roy. I'm a customer. I was in there a little bit ago. Mm-hmm. And I was inside your cooler, you know, like in the back. Yeah. And I, I left something in there. Do you think you can go check and see if it's still there? What did you leave and where? Uh, it was my Kenny Loggins CD. And where would it be? You know the big walk-in cooler that we're not supposed to be in? Okay, what were you doing in there then? I was just... nothing. Then why would it be in there if you're not Cause... supposed to be in there? I, I just... I don't know. I was just in there. Like, let's just not even worry about that part of it. But I left it... I left... I, yeah, I left it in there. I was changing discs on my disc man. And, um... and so you walked back there, and you're not supposed to be back there. And now you want me to go back there and look for your CD? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I left it in there. I don't see where else it could be, because I know while I was in there, I was listening to my disc man. And I had to switch. So what were you doing back there? How long were you back there? Uh, I was in there. I was back there quite a while, like a good 20 minutes. Uh, well, please don't call this number again. Why? Please, and if you come back, I'll call the cops. No, don't call the cop. I'm a regular. I'm a regular customer. Well, you have no business being back there. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have been back there, and I won't go back there again. But I really need okay. my Kenny Loggins. And then tomorrow, I'm going to tell Jeff, and you're not allowed in the store no more. Well, I want my CD back. You can't just take my CD. Okay, well, you shouldn't be back there. Okay, that's no... You have no business being in the back of the store. But that doesn't give you the right to steal my property. Nobody's stealing your property. Well, if you don't give me back my Kenny Loggins CD, you are. Okay, well, then you call the cops, and we'll deal with it then, okay? No, you I'm have not a calling nice the, Why would I bother the cops? her anymore, I will call the cops. Why would I bother the cops with this? Because you had no business being back there, it and does, you can get it from Jeff tomorrow. Well, you know what? Leave, I'm just going to... Leave gonna, these women alone tonight. I'm just going to come in, and I'm just going to go back there again, and I'll look from, I'll look myself. And then I'll call the cops. No, you won't. Watch I'll, me. I'll, I'll sneak back there. You didn't know I was back there the first time. We just tuned into the Snowplow Show. Yes. That's when we realize that we're in luck. We can't wait till the prank calls begin. When Brad makes landlords angry, we're listening to the Snowplow Show. When psycho complainers get accused, we're listening to the Snowplow Show. Meanwhile, Brad is drinking for locals. Cactus. We'll convert rooms into pools and we'll get dark shit in our hair. And we'll install cameras in cacti and spy on the town of Paradise Valley. And we'll call our patrons and I know that we'll laugh. And we'll give snake eyes to those who don't And that's my life on PLA Well, that's just life on PLA Hey, everybody, this is the Snowplow Show. I'm your host, Brad. Today is March 24th, 2021. We're like seven episodes away from episode 700, which I guess means I have to do another best of show. Crud, because once again, I've forgotten to kind of keep track of that. You know, what were the best calls? I'm sure we'll figure something out, though. Thanks to the sponsors of today's episode, Christine, RT, The Least Creative, Todd L., and Lord and Lady of Veggies. They support the show over on Patreon. Why aren't you doing that? Patreon.com slash phone losers. Hey, remember that guy that threatened to kill me and called me a psycho and all that stuff? Here, I have a clip. Let's play this real quick. You're literally a fucking psycho. Your mother should have fucking aborted you because you're a fucking psycho. Wow. Your father's sperm was <laughs> fucking awake <laughs> because are, you're fucking crazy. These are all things that a psycho would say. I think you're projecting. No, a psycho is a person who calls people and harasses them. Well, no, I think stupid that, shit. That was from a call from the last episode or maybe two episodes ago. I can't remember. It happened last week, though. And he had mentioned that I had already pranked him last year. And I quickly decided that was probably King Richard that did that, not me. And I talked to King Richard about it. He does the prank call show called Another Prank Call Show over at anotherprankcallshow.com. And he found the call that that's from, you know, the original call. And he says that his version, the guy isn't as unhinged as on my version. Probably because he was more prepared for a prank call this time. He had an entire year to just think, yeah, next time someone prank calls me, I'm just going to go crazy on them. Let them know what a psycho they are by threatening to splatter their brains all over the sidewalk or whatever he said. So if you go to anotherprankcallshow.com and click on the latest episode, which looks like it is episode 38. Is this the right one? Let me play a little bit from the beginning. Hello? Yeah. Oh, hi, James? 
See, that's the original call to this guy, James, from last year. Yes. Hey, James, it's your neighbor, Cody. And here, I have to at least skip ahead. Let's... Because I know he freaked out a little bit on Richard, but... Tomorrow and Wednesday, when they're doing the dynamiting. And after that, it should be, you know... Seriously, is is this serious? Like, this makes zero sense, what you're saying. What do you mean? He sounds so calm. Isn't that crazy? But he does yell and stuff, I remember. I don't want to sit here and go through the whole thing. And also, you should just go over to King Richard's site and listen to it on there, because it's the very first thing in the file is that phone call. That's his opening prank. I'll have a direct link to it in the show notes. Or in the video description, you know, wherever you see the show notes at. That's where the link is. Go down there and click on it and listen to that guy be sort of calm at first, but then he flips out a little bit. No, I'm just... Because I I can tell you don't live in... What are you talking about? You are not the type of person that lives in... You're not the type of person... Someone like you could never live in our neighborhood. So yeah, that was fun to hear. Thanks, King Richard, for playing that on your show. He had to go look it up. He couldn't remember exactly what show it's from. So that was nice of him to go find that for us. Thanks, King Richard. Two more things before we get started. Number one is that I've changed the email address for prank call requests. So the old one still works. Show at snowplowshow.com still works. You can still use that. Please don't email me anything at multiple addresses all at once. That's a big old mess when you do that. I've changed the request email address though. It's requests at snowplowshow.com. I set it up so both request and requests work. You know, singular and plural versions of request. But really, the best way, if you want to send a number in to be pranked, it is snowplowshow.com slash request. And if that form is broken for whatever reason, sometimes people claim it is, but I've never seen it broken. I don't know why it would be. But if the form doesn't work, then the email address is on the bottom of the page, I think. Please use that email address for all of your requests from now on. If you could, that'd be great. I'll still take the request at any email address, but I'm hoping that's going to help me stay a little bit more organized and on top of my emails which are always out of control. And the last thing is that we have a bunch of new t-shirts and stickers in the two PLA stores on Spreadshirt and on Zazzle. A listener named Yadi M sent me a bunch of PLA and Snowplow Show designs to upload to my stores, and I kind of like them. I'm going to make them the show art for today. I mean, one of the designs will be the show art. So if you look at the show art right now and you like that design, you like a shirt out of it, I'll have a link in the show notes where you can buy Yadi M's designs. Thank you, Yachty M. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Don't hate me if I'm not. It's not my fault. I was born this way. In two weeks, they've traveled 5,000 miles in a stolen Grand Prix. They're wanted for assault in the state of Texas and credit card fraud in three other states. They're hungry. They're tired. They're headed for the Canadian border, and there's only one thing that can stop them. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to take my gun and fucking shoot your fucking head off because you're fucking psycho. You're psycho. You're fucking psycho. I'm going to fucking kill you. Hello? Hey, Ashley. Yeah. It's Steve Dave. It's your neighbor. Hi. Hey. Hey, I, I just wanted to apologize. Uh, last night I had this dream I was spray painting the side of your house. You know, the side of your house away from the driveway where you, you don't see it. What's happening? Hello? Hey. Okay, talk to me. Who is this? Whoa, hey. What happened to Ashley? She's here. Who is this? Well, who are you? I, I was calling for Ashley. Well, trying, trying you're to talking to her husband. All right. Well, this is going to be awkward then. I was spray painting this really large mural of Ashley's name on the side of your house, you know, away from the driveway where you don't see it over there on the left. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. Amazing. And uh, I just, I mean, I shouldn't be doing that. That was mean. I, well, who I, is I, this? I didn't even ask if I could spray paint the who side of your house. Who are you? It's Steve Dave. I'm your neighbor. Steve Dave. Yes. I You're li- our neighbor where? Well, I live over on B- Hill Drive. So I'm, I'm not your neighbor. I'm like behind you guys kind of. So how do you how do you know Ashley? Well, it, I don't really know her. I'm just saying I had a dream about her and I was spray oh, painting. Wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop, stop. Whoa. How do you have her phone number if you don't know her? What are you freaking out for? It was a real. Like, I don't even, I don't even, I, I don't know Ashley. How do like, you what? have 
for how do you have an Ashley's phone number that you don't even know? I'm just calling to apologize for spray painting her name on the side of your house. I shouldn't be doing that. Okay, so how did you it's get not, how did you get her phone number? Like I don't think she'd even appreciate that even if she's into me. How did you get her phone number? I on the internet. It's on the internet. You need to go away. You're that's weird, dude. You're weird. <laughs> I'm not weird. Why is this weird? I'm just trying to be a nice neighbor and apologize. I've got this HOA list that was sent to me about a year ago from Telefan69, and most of the numbers seem to be disconnected or changed. I've gotten a lot of wrong numbers, but that's the first guy I got to pick up. I kind of feel like I've done this list before, maybe, but that's nothing new on this show. You know, last time I was doing King Richard's old list. Hello? Hey, Joseph. No, I'm sorry. You have the wrong phone number. Oh, no. Bob. Duh. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. I just woke up. I was having this weird dream where I was spray painting the side of your house. I'm your neighbor. Okay. I'm just calling to apologize. Um, do you know who you're talking to? Who are you? Oh, this, this is Steve Dave. Uh, I was calling for Bob on Wood Drive. I, I live over uh, on you have... Hill Drive. Oh, okay. I used to live on, uh, Monroe, was it? Monroe? Oh. Jesus, I can't remember when I moved around. So, no, I no longer, li- no longer live in Pennsylvania or Indiana or Vancouver, Washington or anywhere. I, Pittsburgh, I've not lived in. So well, That's great. I didn't vandalize your house then. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. Yeah. I- I'm All still right. sorry. You know, like it, it was like in my dream, you still live there. Oh, okay. But well, no worries then. I was Take having care. I was having impure thoughts and. Uh, oh no! I don't want to hear about that. Not well, about me and you. Well, no. I, I just <laughs> I'm just letting you know. Like I, I I'm not like that normally. Okay. Alrighty. Thank you. I think I'll end up the phone call. Okay. Thanks. Bye bye. I love you. Hello. You have reached nine zero. Leave us a message, and we'll call you back. Brad, Patty, it's your neighbor. It's Steve, Dave, hello, are you there? Hello? Brad? Patty, hello, pick up. Brad? Patty? Hello, hello? I can hear you guys talking in the background, so I know you're there. Oh, well, fine, if that's the way you want to be about it, whatever. Oh, shit, they're calling me back, even though they didn't pick up the machine. Hello? Hello, is this Steve? Oh, yeah, Steve Dave. Hey, Brad? Yeah. I was just calling to apologize. For what? Uh, I took my car keys. Um, I'm your neighbor, by the way. I took my car keys and I, I cut up all your screens on the windows. Out and back. What? Out and back. I'm so sorry. I, I, don't nor- I wouldn't normally do something like that. Who is this? Uh, Steve Dave. I, I live uh, I, I'm kind of over, over here on Hill Drive. Why I'm, would you do that? I don't know. I don't know. I, I was just, uh, I, I, I had a kind of a, a restless night of sleeping, you know, fitful sleep. I don't know. I'm a maniac. I'm not a maniac, sir. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm your neighbor. Don't call me a maniac. Why are you calling me a maniac? Where do you live? Hill Drive. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Maybe we should call the police. Well, no, no. This was just a dream I had. That's all. I just had a dream that I was cutting up your screens with my keys. I would never. That's what I was saying. I'd never do something like that in real life. What's your last name? Days. Days. Yeah. So yeah, there's no reason to call the police over a dream. I just. You know, I cut up your screens. I would never do that in real life. I, I'm just calling to apologize for what I did in my dream. That's all. Who is this crazy guy? Listen, Brad, put Patty on the phone. Whoa. He hung right up. That was his wife's name, was Patty. Hopefully he goes and checks and sees that I didn't cut up his screens. I guess I should lead with it being a dream. I just, I, I want them to believe me for a split second before I let them know it's a dream. Hello. Hey, Billy? No, it's not Billy. Well, n- yeah, it is. I can tell. I know your voice. Come on. 
I just no, wanted, this ain't Billy. Well, I just wanted to let you know about something. Okay, what is it? Uh, I had a dream about you last night. Do what? I had a dream about you last night, and we kissed on the lips, but I'm not gay in real life. What the hell is this? Come on, Billy. I'm I just... Hello? <laughs> All right, he did not like that. I've moved on from that HOA list. I called up every single number on the HOA list. I think it was something like a hundred numbers. And those few calls that you've just heard, not the Billy call, but the ones before that, that's the entire HOA list. So I've moved on to a cornhole directory list again. And I forget who sent this to me. I closed the email already. But usually these are uh, good numbers. You know, the people still have their numbers couple years later, but it is the middle of the day, so we might not get a whole lot of answers. Hello? Hey, uh, is Charles there? Oh, I'm sorry, you had or, the wrong number. Oh, no, I... Is this Charles? This sounds like Charles. No. No, this is a female. It's not Charles. Uh, Charles is a female name, idiot. Are, are you just trying to hide from creditors? No, I'm not. This isn't Charles. Well, then why are you pretending you're not Charles, Charles? I know it's you. I recognize your voice. Well, you don't because I'm not Charles. You are too, and I Charles. Don't appreciate you. I don't appreciate you calling me an idiot. Well, I know. I'm just saying, like, you, you don't even know that Charles is a, a female name? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry that I wasn't aware that Charles was a female name. Did you never watch Charles but in I'm Charge? No, I'm sorry. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, Charles, uh, we're going to have to do something about this credit card debt. And also your warranty's expired. And the Social Security Administration's after you. We gotta do something about all this right now. Thank you. Goodbye. Good luck. Charles! I knew it was you. I bet that was Charles. What a big liar. Hello? Hey, Jeff? Yeah. It's Brad, your neighbor. Who? Brad? Brad, yeah. I don't really know you that well. I just I live here on 13th Avenue, but a little farther down. Uh-huh. Hey, I had a dream last night that uh, we were hanging out and I kissed you on the mouth. Well, that's kind of fucking gay. Well, no, I'm not gay in real life. I'm married and everything, but I just thought it was weird that you were coming on to me like that in my dream. And well, I'd just appreciate if you could not do that again, because I have a well, good don't marriage. Well, fucking sleep. the best thing I'm telling you today. Well, stop, stop. <laughs> All right, I got to stop doing that. I've gotten hung up on so many times trying to do various kissing-on-the-mouth things, and it just never works out. They pretty much just hang up on me immediately. Blue Cricket. Hello? Blue Cricket. Oh, hey. Hey, I'm a, I'm a customer. I come in there sometimes. This is Brad. Uh-huh. Last night I had this dream. I, I went into the back room and I stole things and called to apologize. You did what? I, I went into your back room and I put a bunch of stuff in my pockets, on my jacket and everything, and I just, like, filled up and... And I mean, you guys didn't even notice. What? In in your back room. What time you went in there? Uh, I, it, well, it was daytime. It was still light out. Who was working? I think you were. You sure? Yeah. Who am I? Oh, I don't know. I don't know your names. You're just How a faceless look? convenience store worker to me. How I look? What? Oh, uh, How do I look? Look, I, I don't know all the details. You know, it's a little fuzzy since this was just a dream. It didn't really happen. But I'm just calling to apologize, <laughs> apologize anyway. Oh, okay. We well, apologize for the dream, then. I am. I'm, I'm very sorry. I shouldn't have stolen, stolen anything from you. So did you steal from where or you just stole like the dream? No, I just in the dream. But I, I stole from oh. your store in the back room. I put it all in my jacket, and I went home and I ate it. Oh, okay. Well, we keep our back room, though, locked. I know you can't get in there. I'm sorry. Oh, well, not in my dream. In my dream, I can go right in. Okay, then. Thank you. Because I've been back there before for real, but that's why I know what it looks like in my dream. Oh, but okay. But I, I would never steal, though. I'm a Christian. Okay. Thank you, Brad. Okay. And Have a good day. Like, how come you were flirting with me also? Because that was a little weird. I'm, I'm married. I can't believe Lil Cricket still exists. It's a convenience store in the south. I'm giving up on the residential lists. In fact, I'm giving up on this whole thing, this whole dream thing. It's kind of stupid. It's not working out. But I thought I'd try just a few more like this. That lady was too nice. She had a good sense of humor about the whole thing. So we got to try that one again. Hello, little Cricket. Hey, it's Brad. I'm one of your customers. 
Hey. Hey. Uh, yesterday, I had this dream. I was in the back room and I stole a bunch of stuff from there. You know, I basically shoplifted. Even though it's from the back room, I don't know if that counts. But I'm just calling to apologize. Just, what you say now? Uh, my name is Brad, and I, I, I was shoplifting. Why was so, you shoplifting? I don't know. You know, you can't really control your dreams. You just, you, your dreams just do what they want to do. And in my dream, I was shoplifting last night from your store. I was in the back room just filling up my pockets. What time? Uh, I guess it would have been like three or four in the morning because I remember I woke up in a sweat. Three, what time was you shoplifting in the store? Oh, I don't know because it was daytime there. So it, where like, you at? Like, I'm at home. Where you live? Uh, nearby. I'm, I'm here in... Oh, so what time was you in the store yesterday? Oh, no, I haven't been in your store in a few weeks. You just said you were shoplifting last night. Well, no, in my dream. I was having a dream that I shoplifted. Oh. <laughs> so I, I feel like I still owe you the apology. Oh, okay. But you owe me an apology as well, because you were kind of well. You were rude. When? Last night, but it was the daytime, because it was in the dream. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I mean, you were what really said, you were really it, ripping into me in front of the customers and making me feel very small, and I didn't like it. Last night in yeah. your dream? Yeah. What I said? <laughs> I, I don't want to repeat it because I'm a Christian. I want you to tell me. That's fine. Christians do stuff they're not supposed to do. I know, but it's... I, I forgive you and everything. You don't even... How you know it was me who who um, let it go on you? Well, you're, you're the one that's always working around this time of day. So it must have been around this time of day, like during this shift. No, I'm not. Because I was in the middle of the go. I'm just answering the phone. Oh, okay. Well... Well, can you just let whoever, just let them know that I'm sorry I shoplifted. So how much stuff did you get? Oh, a lot. Like, you know, <laughs> I mean, I was I was in the back room unsupervised, so I was just loading up my pockets and I had my jacket. But why was you in the back room? Well, I go back there sometimes for real, but I would never shoplift. I'm, I'm, I would never sh steal. You go back there for real? Yeah, why? just for fun, just to hang, you know, it's like crowded in the store and it gets to be too much because there's... I'm a little claustrophobic, just with all the people. Uh, so I, I know you don't go in that back room, so I know that. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because nobody don't go in there unless you work here. And then if you do, somebody here will see you and say something. Yeah, oh, no, I just kind of slipped in when you guys were busy with customers. I go in the cooler sometimes, too. Oh, uh, well, I know but, that didn't happen. <laughs> no, it did. I, I'm just saying. But, l like, last night, I didn't really shoplift from there. That was just a dream. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm glad you're not rude to me normally like you were in my dream. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you come back to the store, I really want to know who you are. I want you to tell me you're the one who called the store for shoplifting. Okay, just don't ask me to tell you what you said to me when you were so rude because I, I don't want to repeat any of that. Oh, that's fine because I really want to know. <laughs> okay, and I'll apologize again. Okay. All right. I love you. I love you too. Goodbye. That was worth it just for that ending. I couldn't understand what she said. I just heard the F word on the end. Scotchman across Anchor, how can I help you? It's going to be 77. Oh, is this a little cricket? Uh, well, it was a little cricket. It's a Scotch uh, uh, Scotchman sound. <laughs> oh, I didn't even oh. know that. Uh, yeah, I, I was just calling to apologize for, for shoplifting. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to tell you, but, but. <laughs> well, it, it wasn't real shoplifting. It, I was actually shoplifting in my dream. This is so weird. <laughs> 224. Um, well, I'm sorry this is on your conscience, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I would bring it back if I could. I mean, I'll try to in my dreams, if, but, you know, you can't really control your dreams. I gotta go, man. Are you high right now? Are you high right now? No. You kind of sound like you are. Sound like you are.
No, I, I gotta go, man. No, it's, it's okay. I'm, I'm no snitch. I, I like it that you're. Okay. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Okay. I must have got the wrong number. I'm sorry. I was trying to call a little cricket. I'll, I'll try back. I probably transposed yeah, some digits. Cr- what? You got a little cricket. Oh, I do. Okay. Well, you're the one that usually works this time, right? Not usually, no. Oh, well, I don't know if it's you. What's your name? I'm Keenan. Oh, gee, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Because I never can tell what your name tag says. Like, it's a, it's spelled weird, right? No, it's just K-E-E-N-A-N. <sighs> All right, listen. I just wanted to apologize. For what? Uh, last night in my dream, I came in your store while you were working, and I kissed you on the mouth. Oh. Uh. And I, I wouldn't ever do anything like that in real life. But in my dream, okay. in my dream, we did make out, and you kissed kind of weird. Yeah. You do you like a weird thing with? Do you do that in real life? That thing with your tongue? That's good. It was a little creepy, to be honest. Alright, um, well, it's fine, sir. You have okay. a good one. I'm, 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 and I'm sorry, too, because I have shoplifted from there. <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> it's Brad. I, I didn't shoplift for real, just in my dream. But that, that's what caused the initial uh, confrontation that led to you kissing me. Oh, okay. On the mouth. Alright. So, yep, I'm sorry about the shoplifting. Alright, you have a good one, sir. Alright, I love you. (laughs) Doesn't love me. Alright, I think I'm just going to quit doing this whole dream thing. I've had enough of this. I think this needs to be a nighttime prank, if I ever do a nighttime live show again. Because people are more in the mood to hear about my dreams when it's nighttime and I've just woken them up. Quick Stop, this is Brandy. Hey, Brandy. This is Steve Dave from the corporate office with Quick Stop. Uh-huh. Uh, I was calling to let you know there's going to be a, a guy from the corporate office in there for the rest of today just observing. He'll just be standing there with a the clipboard. In Quick Stop? We're no longer a Quick Mart. Yeah, I know, but uh, it's just the, the corporate office is the same, though. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. So, but he's going to be wearing kind of this uh, suit that makes him appear transparent. So you won't actually be able to see him. It's going to be as if he's a ghost. But not for real, obviously. Ghosts aren't real. Right. Yeah, so just if you see something, he's probably in there right now. Just kind of standing off out of the way in the corner watching and observing. Uh Uh-huh. But you can't see him, is what I'm saying. Okay. We, We have a... You know, a lot of the stores, they, they get a little freaked out if they bump into him or, you know, they, they might catch a glimpse of, of him from the corner of their eye. Uh-huh. You can't look directly at him, though. It doesn't work. Okay. So I'm just letting you know the the, the guy that's in there, he's he's supposed to be in there. He's from corporate. You just can't see him. Okay. Is he in there right now? Have you noticed him? Um, I'm back here in the office doing the schedule, but let me go up here and see. Okay. Uh, his name's Harold. Can, can you, can you maybe just yell out? Is Harold here? Because I've been trying to text him. Yeah. Is Harold here? Invisible, in in, here. In, in, invisible yeah. Harold. No, they wouldn't be able to see him. Invisible Harold. No. No, he's not here. Well, Nobody's answering anyway. Well, he's probably he's just instructed to be writing on his clipboard. Can you say, Invisible Herald, it's okay to uncloak yourself. Uh, corporate's on the phone. Inv- Invisible Herald, it's... Corporate's on the phone. It's okay to uncloak yourself. It's okay to what? Uncloak yourself. You know, like... It's okay to uncloak yourself. Execute order 2XL956. No, nobody, nothing's responding. All right, he's probably just not there yet. Well, if you see the door open by itself, that's him, and he'll just be observing for the rest of the shift, for the rest okay. of the evening. Okay. All right, thank you very much, Pam. Thank you, bye-bye. Goodbye.
What the hell? She she did not believe that, right? I mean, that's the lady that makes the schedule. She's some kind of a manager or something. And she actually thinks there's an invisible man in her store. Why would she believe that? She didn't believe that, did she? Quick, Mark Leoma, how may I help you? Hey there, it's uh, Steve Dave from the corporate office. Hello? I'm sorry? Uh, this is Steve Dave. I'm calling from the corporate office. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Oh, well, I, I needed to let you know there's going to be a guy in there from corporate. He's just going to be observing. He'll, he'll just be standing around with the clipboard observing. But you won't be able to see him, is the thing. Hello? Hello? Why are you not talking, ma'am? I'm from corporate. Hello? I, I can still hear you, you know, standing there. Like, why are you not saying anything now? This is a little weird. Do I need to call back? Should I talk to someone else? Hello? What did you say your name was? Steve Day from corporate. What, what was all that about? There was just a bunch of silence. I lost connection. Oh, I don't think so, because I could hear the machinery running in the background the entire time. So I, I definitely could hear audio on your end. You're just sitting there not saying anything, like a weird creep. Hello? You're doing it again, ma'am. I am... Okay, when is this person supposed to be here? Well, he might be in there already, but you won't, you're not going to be able to see him, because... Uh, He's wearing one of the... You, you read about those invisibility things, right? That you can wear and you just won't really see him? Unless you catch him of out of course. the... Of course. Yeah. So unless you catch him out of the corner of your eye, he'll just pretty much just be in there observing invisible. Hello? All righty. So Thank he, you for letting me know. Okay, he's probably in there right now. You're welcome. Hello? You, you stopped talking again. You're, you're really Is bad at this. Is there anything in particular I need to do for him? Well, I was... You're just being weird. You're making this whole thing weird. Like, you're bad at the phone. Don't answer the phone anymore, okay? Will do. All right. Don't answer ever again. That's an order. Say yes, Alrighty. sir, yes, sir. Yeah, like you just, it takes forever for you to answer. See, here, we're doing All it again. All right, well, the, just... the guy with the clipboard's in here. He sees we're getting busy. I need to go up front. Okay, well, don't bother him if you see him. Like, just don't talk to him. He's busy. Well, leave him be. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. All right, good job responding there. Keep it up. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Bye. That was a frustrating call. Quickmart, Jennifer, how may I help you? Hey, Jennifer, this is Steve Day from the corporate office with Quickmart. Hi. Hi. Hey, uh, we, we noticed that the uh, the subliminal advertising up there on the wall is has gotten kind of dusty. Uh-huh. Like, you know, r- like right above the coolers where there's just a big blank space? Right. Yeah, that, there's uh, subliminal messages there that uh, trick people into buying only Pepsi products. Are there? Yes, but they're they're not working. We've noticed from the reports, and we can see in the security cameras when we apply the UV light that the subliminal message is kind of fading because it's just a little dusty up there. Uh huh. Is there any way you could just kind of dust off up there above the coolers on that big blank area? With okay. The, with the broom, maybe. Okay, I'll give someone to do that. Who's this again? Uh, this is Steve Day from Corporate. Yeah, they, they put a subliminal message up there that tells people not to buy Coke, only buy Pepsi. And it, it works pretty oh. well. That's why you sell more Pepsi than Coke. Oh. Yeah, but okay. it's like right above the coolers where that blank area is. It it uh, it, it orders the customers. Like anyone that glances up, they're only going to buy Pepsi most likely. Oh, but okay. It's, it's a little broken right now. I don't know if you uh-huh. guys have dusted that off lately. I'll have to use mine check that out. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we're just You're worried, worried about the reports. Pepsi's, Pepsi's getting okay. mad. <laughs> All righty. Okay. Uh, thank you very Thanks. much, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Bye. Have a good day. Goodbye. There wasn't really any conflict in that one. She just believes it, and it's over. 
I mean, it's funny that now she's going to tell everybody, did you know there's subliminal messages up there? I mean, yeah, I've got to try that again. I need someone to argue with me about the subliminal messages to create a better storyline here. We need three acts in the, in the phone calls. We can't just have them agree and then the whole thing's over. Circle K, Mercy Springs, how can I help you? Hey there, it's, it's uh, Steve Dave from the corporate office with Circle K. Hi. Hi. Hey, uh, we just noticed that your uh, subliminal advertising signs are a bit dusty and they're not working anymore. The, the which signs? Um, well, you know, directly above the coolers where there's just a big blank area on the wall? Uh-huh. Uh, that's a subliminal advertising message. It encourages people to, to buy more beer than they should. <laughs> okay. Is, is there any way you could get someone to sweep that off? Yes, I will tell them right now. Okay, just just like the whole area above those cooler doors. That's a, above the cooler, of the, above the beer doors? Yeah, yeah. It encourages okay. people to buy, um, like, you know, 24 packs instead of 12 You know, just whatever the biggest is. Like, get the okay. biggest beer and then also to only buy Pepsi products and not as much Coke. <laughs> okay, I will get somebody on it right now. Okay, <laughs> well, you're laughing. You know I'm serious, right? Yes, like, no, no. I'm like, always laughing at everything. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, no, <laughs> yeah, no, no I'm going to have somebody do it right now. Okay, and you understand what subliminal advertising is, right? Yes. Okay, great. Something that makes people want to buy something else. Oh, like yeah, said. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's all back there. <laughs> it's bigger, better. Yeah, yeah. It's, you won't be able to see it when you sweep it, but it's there. Okay. It's like a very slight okay. variation in the paint. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Have a good day. Uh, bye-bye. Goodbye. I'm going to have to quit doing this, too, because just nobody cares. They're just like, okay, we'll sweep that right off. No big deal. That sounds normal. Or maybe this is actually a thing as Circle K now, putting hidden messages up there to trick the customers. That's what I need to say. I need to use the word trick. Or did I do that already? I can't remember. Hello? Hey, girl. Uh, Hey. It's uh, Steve Day from the corporate office here at Circle K. Who is this? Uh, Steve Day from the... The corporate office with Circle K. He, oh, from the corporate office? Yeah. Oh, hi. Yeah, your connection is kind of crazy. It's like all cutting out and stuff. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's okay. I'm not. So now it's really windy here. Maybe that's why. Where are you? It, what's, what's in there? I, I didn't hear that. It's really very windy here. Where are you? Windy inside the store? I, I'm, I'm in. No, no, no. <laughs> I just want, I was outside, but it's windy here. Period. I don't know if that affects the. Oh not yeah. The store, of it probably does. It, it scatters around the five uh, G waves. Yeah. yeah. So how can I help you? Uh, the subliminal advertising sign is dusty. You know, like right above the coolers, above the beer coolers. The yeah. S- yeah. You know how there's that big blank space up there on the wall. In between all the little signs. Yeah. Yeah. That. Like. Yeah. That's where the subliminal yeah. advertisement signs are. Do you have a sign, a, like a real sign, covering up the subliminal sign? A what? You know, subliminal advertising messages that we put up there on the walls to to trick customers. I don't know anything about subliminal messages. No, uh, you oh, mean? Yeah, yeah, it's to trick the customers into buying extra things that they don't need, like more beer and you know. Well, we would never do that. Oh, oh no! Uh, all the Circle K's do it. it. It's it's a hidden message. No, they don't. Up on the wall, you probably put a, a normal advertisement over, and those aren't as good. You know what? If we did, we would never put it in the words you just put it in. Oh, no. They can't read the words. They just kind of, their subconscious sees the words, but they don't actually see it. So, like, you, you, don't, you won't see it that it's up Well, the there. way that you just put it, it sounded pretty bad. Yeah, well, it tricks them into you, buying more. You work for the corporate? Yeah, I'm, I'm in the Circle K corporate office. It tricks them into buying more beer than they should. It, it's like a normal, uh, it's a normal corporate thing to do. Okay, so anyway, what about it? Well, if you have posters up there covering up the subliminal messages, uh, you might want to take those down because they're affecting I your... don't have any posters up there at all. Oh, you said there was advertisements up there. Well, there is, but they're just telling you what's in each door. Oh, yeah. Well, no, not those. I'm talking about all the big blank space up there above the coolers. We have nothing there. I think there... This, this, I... No, there is something there. That's what I'm saying. It's a subliminal message. You can't see it. Only your subconscious sees it. It tricks you into buying. Oh, okay, okay. I got you now. Now I understand. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 yeah okay. It encourages kids to buy vape, see, vape, vape pens and stuff. Yeah, okay. You can see it? So, 
No, no, no. It's just something in your head, is what you're saying. Y- yeah, but it's really there. I could it's see just... it if I was thinking about it, I guess. Well, it's like one of those... those or pa- if I was doing some really good drugs or something like that. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You know those those paintings they used to have in malls where you'd have to stare at it and see the the sailboat image? Never mind. No. Yeah, it's a sublime... Oh, yeah, yeah, but like the hidden seek things. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. A, there's advertisements. Anyways, how can I help you? Yeah, well, uh, could you just have uh, somebody there sweep down the walls up there? Because the, I think the subliminal advertising signs are just dusty, and it's, it's okay. Sure, no problem. Yeah, because we've noticed that the vape pen sales are down because this encourages kids to buy vape pens. Oh well, yeah. Get a fake ID, kids. Vape vaping's cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the so ba- anyway, huh? Oh yeah, if you could just have someone s- sweep the wall. Sweep- well, actually, we swept the walls yesterday. You swept the walls? We did sweep the walls. We do that often, and then we repaint them too sometimes. How often do you repaint? Oh my gosh, did you repaint over the? Well, subliminal- we repaint. We spot paint every time that there's like a mark or something on the wall. Oh, I see. Okay, well, that's good spot painting. But you don't want to. You don't want to paint yeah. over those subliminal messages up there up high. Yeah, well, well, no, we do sometimes. Well, well, if you do that, well, we can Because can't... they might advertise the wrong price. Well, no, they, these are subliminal. These are just general messages like buy more beer than you need. You know, buy a 24-pack. What do you need a six-pack for? Get the 24-pack of beer. Okay. Yeah, you know, stuff like Anyways. that. Hey, okay, so hey kids, other than vaping's cool. The wall, is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, no, that's it. We we're just concerned that your uh, your beer sales were down and... Uh, I just, you know, it looks like the subliminal messages are probably just covered with dust, probably. Okay. So don't paint over those, please. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I hope you Thank have, you. Have I, a nice day. Oh, no, you have a nice day. Okay, I will. All right. Don't tell me what to do. Thank Bye. you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Well, at least she argued. I finally got an argument out of someone. Circle K. Hey, uh, this is Brad. I was in there a little bit ago. Um, I'm, the, I'm the one that bought the Pepsi. I'm the manager. I didn't ring you up, hun. Ah, shoot. Well, do you know who's at uh, the counter? Brad, counter- bring, up the man- uh, bring up a Pepsi. Do you name Brad? Yeah, no, Brad. Okay. Leanne's here. What's up? Oh, Leanne. Yeah, that's the one. She was looking at me. She keep, Like, when I come in, she's always looking at me like like I'm the kind of guy that names my kids after famous celebrities. You name your kids after famous celebrities. No, that's not funny. No, that's the way that Leanne keeps looking at me. She looks. She oh, gives in a me, bad way. Yeah, well, no, she looks at me as if I name my kids after famous celebrities. I don't even have kids. I'm not understanding you. What? We're in a no judge zone here, sir. We oh, work the, in a no judge zone. Yeah, uh, what but, are you trying to say? Well, Leanne, like she's really judging me. She's. She's, no, I'm sorry. Of all my employees in the world, that one's not the one. <laughs> well, could you just ask her? Because she's, she's looking at me like I named my kids after famous celebrities. And I, I'm, not yeah, even... I'm not understanding <laughs> if you're trying to be sarcastic with that statement. Oh, no, literally. Like, uh, I, I'm not even into, into celebrities or, you know, I, no, I watch No, I don't movies. understand what you're saying with your metaphor that you're using. I'm not getting it. Well, it's not a metaphor. How it's, is she looking at you? Or she, I, don't, I don't understand. <laughs> She's looking at me exactly like I named my kids after famous celebrities, and I don't. I would never do that, even if I had kids. Oh, you're saying she's being prude. No, she's looking at me like I n- named my kids after famous celebrities. Okay, well, and I apologize, if, if I, and I guess I'll speak to her about that. I'm not understanding. Literally, we're a no-judge zone. We don't yeah. give a crap who you are, what you do, what you name your kids. Okay. We're it, here to work. We're here to be nice to everybody that enters the store. We greet everybody. If I ever have kids, I'm going to name them Richard and Olga, and that's not after anyone. I just like those names. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> no, no, you wouldn't. That, that's, those I are my future care, kids' honey. names. Okay. Um, I apologize if we offended you in any way. Oh, no. I really do. And I'm not trying, trying I to cause problems. To. Can I talk to Leanne real quick, though? Yes, please. Leanne, this man would like to speak to you, and I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello? Hey, Leanne, it's Brad. I, he was blowing it all out of proportion. I don't know what his problem was. That was weird. Okay, yeah, I thought it was a different Brad. Oh, no, it's, uh, you were just looking at me like I named my kids after famous celebrities, and I don't do that. I don't. Yeah, if I looked at you the wrong way, I apologize for that. Oh, not the wrong way. You were just, I, I, don't... You, I think you were just, um, maybe confused, because I, I would never name my kids after famous celebrities. I, I would, I wouldn't do that. 
Okay, I, I don't understand why how looking at someone in a certain way makes them makes you feel like you have your kids named after famous celebrities. I think that's awesome. I have my my dogs named after famous celebrity. Oh, that's fucking gross. Which celebrity? Yeah. Is what's, there anything else I can do to help you? What's your dog's name? My dog is outside of work. It doesn't. It's not really your concern. Well, you brought it up. But okay, what what can I do to make this right for you? For the way I looked at you, because oh. I, I really apologize for that. No, I was just. I don't really. I don't really look at guys. I'm. I'm. I'm not even into guys. So. Yeah. Well, I am. So I'm not into you. But anyway, like I. I just. I just would hope that you would stop looking at me like I named my kids after famous celebrities. Okay, I just don't know what the look of looking at somebody like famous celebrities is, but I'll try not to look at you like your kids are named after famous celebrities. All right, But if you. I mess up and I accidentally do look at you like your kids are named after celebrities, I apologize in advance. All right, and I'm going to secretly judge you about your dog, but I won't say anything. I won't look at you. You, can, you can totally secretly judge me, man. Uh, that's the life you want to live. I'm, I'm good with you. I'm a no-judge nothing, but you have a great day. I got better things to do than be angry at what's, life. What's your dog's so, name, though? What's your dog's name? My dog's name is Atreyu. It's from what? the never ending story. From the never ending story. Yes. Oh, He's that's... named after the kid from the never ending story. That's, yes. that's cute. I'd never name my kid that though. That's weird. Sorry, Brad. Yeah. But I'm sorry, Brad. Oh. <laughs> Did the manager just instruct you to say I'm sorry? No, I'm that's I'm weird. seriously telling yeah, I'm seriously saying I'm sorry because I did not know that that was a look that people gave people. Oh no, you don't so have to be sorry. Thank you for making I'm, me aware of that. I, I, yeah, I yeah, really this, appreciate that. I learned something from you today. That's good. I'm glad. Yeah, All thank right. you, Brad. Give, I really appreciate your help. Give your dog kisses for yeah. me. I will give him a big fat kiss for you and my cat too, who's named after a celebrity as well. Which one? Giles from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. If you know him, that's my idol. Yeah, that's disgusting. Yeah. Ugh. All right, I gotta go. Yeah. Okay, you have a great day, Brad. I love All you. Right. Goodbye. Bye. Damn it, I want to hear their conversation that they're having right now about Brad. And it's too bad she realized that I wasn't the Brad she thought I was. Because that would be great. They'd have a nice little awkward conversation the next time. That was an idea from Parkman back when I was calling up neighborhoods and just telling people to stop looking at me in certain ways. Parkman suggested some things like, I named my kids after famous celebrities. But their names are actually Richard and Olga. I don't know if he wrote that or if I added that in. But that was kind of fun. Thank you, Parkman, for that idea. There's a couple more in here. I think I'm going to try a couple more and then end this show. Circle K Davis, how can I help you? Hey, Davis, it's Brad. I'm, I'm a customer. I, I was in there a little bit ago. Uh-huh. And you were looking at me kind of like I get all, like I'm one of those people that gets all my news from Pornhub. And uh, I'm not. I'm going to let you go, honey. You have a great day. <laughs> Why? <laughs> all right, that didn't work out, Parkman. Sorry, that idea may be defective, I'm afraid. Didn't seem to work. Circle K on the street. Hey, uh, it's Brad. I was in there just a little bit ago. I'm the one that bought the Pepsi. Yeah. Yeah, you were kind of looking at me like I'm the kind of person to get all my news from Pornhub. But I don't do that. Excuse me? The, the, just the way you, you were giving me this look, like I'm one of those guys that just gets all my news from Pornhub. I don't know. I'm sorry to for you to get that out of me, but no, that wasn't the case. I'm sorry. Okay, you got I, the wrong person. I I was not even aware that Pornhub had news. The yeah. news section. I thought it was just you know dirty Five videos. But, okay, that's fine, but I gotta go. All you right, have a good one. Where are you going? Maybe if I got a male employee for that one, because the females probably just think I'm hitting on them. Hello, thank you for calling. Circle okay, who's speaking? I can help you. Hey there. Uh, I was in there a little bit ago. This is Brad. Um, I bought the Pepsi. Uh-huh. And you were kind of looking at me like I get all my news from Pornhub, which, which I don't. Oh. Uh, uh, well, I mean, was I even on the floor? I think, what time was this? Well, whoever the guy was at the counter, like, he was just, he was giving me this look like I'm the kind of person to get all my news from Pornhub, and I don't. I okay. Well, I, can, can you describe him for me? No. Uh, okay, then, I mean, I, I can't really do much about it, boss. I don't know who, I ain't your who boss, the person on the buddy. counter was. Hey, no worries. All right. Just want to tell everybody, because... Because it's condescending, and you're a condescending person? Shouldn't be sure. like that. Like, not only are you condescending, oh. but you're looking at me like, I get all my news from Pornhub, and I don't. Uh, I mean, like I said, you you would have to describe the person, because I don't even know if you're talking about me. I know it was you, because, like, you're, you're, you got the attitude, and you're calling me boss and stuff. Call everybody buff. 
Yeah, well, maybe that's why everyone thinks that you think that they look at Pornhub for news. I mean, it's a reliable source now, so... Not for news. Is. Like, is there news? Yeah, absolutely. What? What kind of news? Yeah, Just porn, porn news? No, anything, really. Oh. If you look hard enough. Hold on. <laughs> hard enough. Yeah. Good one. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry, boss. I mean, I don't, I really got. I don't. I wish I could like you know joke around more, but I, yeah, I gotta but go. I ain't your boss, cowboy. Stop calling me boss. I don't like it. I'm looking on sorry, Pornhub sorry. right now, and all I see is naked people. It, you know, it's tough. You gotta you gotta use keywords and stuff like that. But I I, I don't like I said I don't have time for this today. But there's not a uh, news section. Wanna, like, the, where, is there a tab? Back? Uh, not not typically not typically. But uh, I'll, if you want to call back later, and then uh, maybe I can try to help you with it. But Right now I can, man. I gotta take care of some stuff, so All right, the, I'm gonna let you go for today. Uh, the video's starting. This one's a J-Rock production. Oh, All right. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna let you go, then. All right. Later. I love you. Bye. Bye. It's your boss. Oh, God. Oh, God. Turn those off. Oh, my God. What's happening? So what the hell, Parkman? There's no news on Pornhub? I don't think. I don't see any. I'm looking at all the tabs. Circle K, how can I help you? Hello, hello. Hello, this is Steve Dave from the corporate office of Circle K. Hi. Hey, I just calling to do your uh, your uh, over the phone evaluation, real quick. Do you have the speaker phone there at the counter? Yes, oh. I got it. Uh huh. Okay. Um, I I just they want me okay. to just monitor you for about five minutes while you ring up customers and stuff. Eight sixty five. Uh huh. Uh, would you mind putting the phone on speaker, and I'll just mute. Oh. Okay. And you can, do you, you do have speaker phone right? Yes, I do have so, the speaker phone. Okay, and I'll just I'll just kind of say, hey, uh, the evaluation's over, and you'll hear me, right? Yes. Okay, great. Um, yeah. If you okay. Could, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh -huh. mute and just put it on speaker and go about your business. It'll just be five minutes. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Uh huh. It went great. Yep, you're good, baby. Have a good one. Good. You want a bag? Not really. I'm good. See you next time. All right. Hello. Good, baby. How about you? Wow. Attention, Circle K shoppers. Kevin Spacey did 9-11. What you want to get? Give me a $3 piece. $3, lady? Yes, ma'am. Attention, Circle K customers. Please do not call the, the cashier, hun. That's, that's not cool. It's sexist. Thank you. Have a good one. So, are you here? Short Attention, Circle K customers. I am the true lord of the dance, no matter what those idiots at work say. You said bow? Yes, ma'am. You have your ID on one. Attention, Circle K customers. I am making a poop right now. Uh, hello? I, I can't seem to hear the audio anymore. Hello, are you there, ma'am? What the heck? She just hung up on me for some reason. Let me call right back. Talk to Pam, I help you. Oh, hey there. We got disconnected somehow. It's Steve Dave. Uh, yeah, I kept hearing some hello, Circle K customers, something, something, something. I didn't know what, so I just hung up the phone. <laughs> oh, could, could you could you not hear what I was saying, though? Uh, yeah, I can hear you what you're saying. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I was trying to, I didn't want to be too offensive. I just wanted to say silly things that all the customers uh, yeah, yeah, I heard it. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't hear you, but I heard you, yeah. Oh, they didn't hear it? Why didn't they hear it? Uh, because it's a speakerphone, so it's not that loud. Oh, can you turn it up all the way, and we'll do it again? No, because it's the loudest it can go. Because what? It's the loudest it can go. Oh, well, can you just yell out some things that I'll tell you what to yell out? Can you tell... Okay, yeah, go Go ahead. T tell everyone in the store, announce that Kev Kevin Spacey is solely responsible for 9-11. Okay. He said the man on the phone said he was responsible for 9-11. responsible for 9-11. Uh -huh. No, no, Kevin Spacey was, not me. <laughs> well, well yeah, okay, they say okay. Can I talk to that <laughs> customer real quick? Yeah, hold on. Hey, that wasn't a transfer to the customer. That was more like she just hung up the phone. What a bunch of bullshit. I think I stole that idea from Leon on the Leon Haberdashery prank call show. I think. I'm pretty sure it was him. I think he was on speaker and may have said something weird. I don't remember, actually. It was somebody else. It wasn't me. And it's kind of too bad that the customers couldn't hear me, she claims. 
Even though she could hear me, why could she hear me and the customers couldn't hear me? I'm so confused. Anyway, it's voicemail time, everybody. Hey, this is MC. Hey, I wanted to thank you because MC. today I had a really stressful day at work. And then I listened. It's not my fault. Don't thank me for you having a stressful day at work. How do I have anything to do with that? Don't yell at me. Two, God damn it. Six, three, seven commercial properties. And your reaction. I'm just kidding. I know what you're saying. Reading in the chat, somebody saying that you, you know, to tell people you want a dojo for hobos. Oh, yeah. Made me lose it and just made my day. That I just laughed so hard just hearing your reaction, reading the chat. So that's it. Just wanted to say you make a lot of difference in people's lives, especially oh, like stressful oh, yeah. days and whatever. So Thanks. thank you. Love you. Thank you. I remember dojos for hobos. That was pretty great. Hello, Bradward. Hey. It's uh, Dirty Dr. Dan. Hey. I uh, just wanted to say how much I love your show still. Uh, I, I fucking love your show. Uh, when I watch your your show, the the red meat hangs from my snatch. What? That was that was disgusting. I'm sorry, weird. just kidding. I'm not sorry. You're making it weird. Uh, also, I have another question, and I, I saved this for last, so you can cut it out if you are not comfortable with it. But um, Shit. why? Uh, is there any reason in particular you left the world of prank calls Discord? Uh, is there? Because I do what I want, motherfucker. No, really, there's not much reason. I just needed to cut down on social media. I left several Discords including that one. I also deleted all of my Discord friends. I deleted all of my Facebook friends. I will be back in the Discord eventually. I just need a small break from it, from a lot of them. It's pretty amazing. On the side of my Discord page now, it doesn't scroll anymore through all the different servers. I'm like a member of 10 servers, I think, total. It's kind of nice. And now nobody can tag me anymore because I don't have any friends, both on Discord and Facebook. It's been really amazing. I've loved this. I wish I'd done this a long hey, time Brad, ago. Hey, Call Me Cat calling in. Hey. Uh, I'm on my break right now uh, from my job as a dishwasher, and I just want to thank you for the uh, song at the end of show number 692. Oh, where the it dishwashing. Gives us dishwasher some recognition. <laughs> yeah. I want to say I listen to your show all the time. While well, I don't thank me. Thank Rappy McRapperson. He actually was a dishwasher when that song came out, and I think he did quit that job pretty quickly. I don't think after 45 minutes but maybe a couple days or dishes, so. You know, it's the only thing that prevents me from taking a knife and just killing all the customers. Whoa, hey. So, uh, thanks. I think I better save this number in case I read about something crazy happening in the newspaper. You're not allowed to kill anyone anymore, because I'm on to you. Hey, Brad, it's Haley's Comet calling up, and I believe hey. I have stumbled across an answer to one of the age-old questions of the Snowplow Show. Why don't snow and plow uh, rhyme? You're going to spoil it. Even though they're both spelled the same ending. You're going to ruin it. I discovered the, the solution. You're going to end the mystery. Of a By being smart, damn it. Christian Sharp's uh, YouTube channel my six-year-old was watching about the evolution of the alphabet from ancient Egyptian and Greek and yada yada up to the modern times. Yeah. And it turns out the letter W really did start off as two U's concatenated together, and it was sort of this populist mistake. Uh, spelling reformers were trying to have separate letters for the W and B sounds, but uh, the letter W caught on because the other letters they were trying to use for yeah. these, these different sounds were a bit harder to write than a W. I so see. That's why snow and plow don't rhyme. Now we know. Because People wanted to have an easier time writing letters. Well, it's good to know. I, I've been sent explanations before. I think they were different than that, though. But I believe your version more than that other guy. Hey, Brad, it's your Mako from San Diego knows. County. I believe it was on a recent episode you were mentioning um, some guy, Rue something, um, but about, like, the butterfly effect, how chain events. Um, there's actually a call, a carding call of that on episode one of the Snowplow Show at the five minute mark just so i let you know that okay Thanks, bye. oh like a rube goldberg machine call thing is that what you're talking i don't know what's happening i forget everything from the last show already hey this is uh ryan jordan i'm mr brad what do you ryan. get when you cross a cactus with a porcupine i don't know what do you get when you cross a cactus with a porcupine a prickly situation wait what a prickly situation yeah i i would guess it makes sense. I think that checks out. Okay, here, here, there's a drum thing. Good morning, Roy. This is Ernie. In episode 691, Dozer left you a voicemail saying that he had a box of fuck books fall out of the back of his truck. Ooh, okay. That is a Howard Stern reference. 
He was trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Ah, fuck. Clever one. Yeah. I just thought you'd want to know. That was bye bye. Sure, clever. You really got me good. Hi, Brad. This is Tomato Forecast. Hey. Uh, I was listening to the Snowplow show the other day, and uh, when when you were saying "I love you, I love you," and uh, the other guys, the guy on the other line said, uh, "Say it back." I just I cracked up. I just wanted to say that. Doing great. Keep up the good work. Love you, Brad. I think you're talking about the one where they were all in the car together and just screaming pretty much at me. That was a fun call. Stop saying sir and ma'am during a prank call. What happened to the Roy that would verbally assault people, you fucking pussy? Wow. Sorry, sir. Didn't mean to offend you. Hey, Brad, this is Evan. Hey. So, uh, I actually just started watching the Reply All podcast, like, a few weeks back, or probably, like, two or, like, about two months I didn't hear what you said. And I binged all of it, especially your episode. (laughs) They were actually pretty good. Oh, I think you said Reply All. Yeah, I haven't listened to them in a while. I need to get back into their show. Podcasts are kind of concise and short. And kind of get to the point really quick. Not that you're a strong point. You know, whatever. But anyways, wow. uh, did you hear about Good them one. kind of having a kind of drama going on? I just, I guess uh, my question is, I just wanted your uh, take on it. But uh, anyways, uh, good show. Keep it up. Were you talking about the Reply All podcast? I can't imagine them putting their drama out there. But if there was drama, I don't think I would give a shit. I'm more there just for the podcast itself. Screw those guys. I don't care about them. Hey, Roy. Hey. It's Ryan from Indiana. Hello. Listen, I work for a highway department, and if you just tightened up your vocabulary a little bit, I think some of your right-of-way pranks could exponentially increase the freak-out factor. Yeah. If you need help, let me know. Thanks. Okay, I will probably never call you, but you could have just told me what to say in the voicemail, you know, to increase my freak-out factor. Hey, Brad, this is Call Me Cactus. Uh, sorry if there's a lot of noise. I'm on my way to the post office right now to get some bugs to eat. Mm-hmm. I was just wondering why uh, sometimes when you say your name on the show uh, and people mishear you, you don't correct them. Like on the last show, you said your name is Bob Dabalina, but the woman thought you said Bob Bobalina. Yeah. And it's happened in some other shows before, too, so I was wondering why you don't correct them. Because usually if they mishear your name, it sort of leads them to believe that it's not real. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It just didn't seem important. And that sounded hilarious. Bob Bobolina. Why wouldn't I let her call me Bob Bobolina? That's an awesome... I should just use that name instead of Dobolina. I think that lady was right. I've been pronouncing it wrong all these years. It's pronounced Bob Bobolina. That's going to be my name from now on. Okay, I think I need a break from voicemails for the rest of the show. So the show's over. I hope you all enjoyed this one. I kind of did. Even though I had a hard time getting everyone to respond to the whole dream thing. Mostly I just got hung up on, so those will probably all get deleted. But whatever, it was still fun. Thanks everybody for listening. Thank you to this show's sponsors, Christine, RT, The Least Creative, Todd L., and Lord and Lady of Veggies. They support the show on patreon.com slash losers, which gives them one extra show per week, usually. I haven't done one this week yet, but I think I did two last week. I'm sure I'll do another one this week, though. Thanks again, everybody, for listening to the show. I'm going to end this one with a song that was sent in to me by the guy whose name I can never pronounce. He sent me an email and told me how to pronounce it, which I'm only going to remember this one time. I won't remember it next time. But this is a song by King Zakaitis, and it's called Motherfucker Policy. Bye, everyone. Steve Dave, I'm with the city. You can believe when I say those kids need to shut the fuck up, so listen up, buttercup. We got complaints that it ain't pretty. Your husband John is winking his butthole. We got video from on top of the light bulb. We're also delivering a salt pile to your yard in a little while. Don't be taking the seats in your meat, because it ain't there for you to fucking eat. Now tonight you might hear some beef. Let's just